Hey y'all, we're gonna work on an acrylic painting today. This is a really good process if you've got a cool coloring book or page that you've been wanting to work on, but instead of just working with colored pencils, you wanna do something a little more intricate with paint. You can do this on the canvas we provided, but if you finish that up and you're feeling super inspired, regular paper will work totally fine for this. We're gonna work with our basic uh, colors here. We've got our primaries, our black and our white, and we can make pretty much anything else we're wanting from there. Um, if y'all have any sort of page that you want to work with, the coolest way to transfer this, just flip it on over, color the whole back with um, your pencil, and it's going to make your own transfer paper. So we can then flip that over, place it wherever it makes us happiest, and then just take our time and get all of the details that we think will be the most useful to us later. So obviously this deer is super intricate. I'm not gonna use all of these fine pattern details. There's something I could go back in and add with a pin over top of my painting later. But I just thought this deer was pretty neat and I thought it would be a good spring-like base. So when I peel that up, it's a little hard to see, but let's actually zoom in. You can see a little bit more of that fine detail that we can utilize in a little bit. So using all of this base here, I want to go ahead and block in my main areas. So I don't want to do a really refined, nice job on all of this and then not have anything in my background and end up destroying it. So I'm going to pick just a bright background color to start with kind of just feeling a nice bright yellow. Maybe just a touch of red to make it a little less just primary bland. Not quite orange, but just a little more sunny. And I can follow the contours of my deer here. instead of just doing something plain and flat I've gone for a bit of a blend a little bit fiery something more interesting to look at than a flat color and this is up to you you can go really smooth really flatten out all that color to get a perfect blend or you can get a little bit more flowy with it allow your brush strokes to throw show through more really highlight the fact that it is a painting um, that is totally up to you kind of just whatever aesthetic choice um, works best with you know, who you wanna give this to or where you wanna put it in your room. From there, we're gonna start our deer. This is another place you can make a more bold choice. Obviously we started with a, an elaborate coloring page, so you could make your deer blue. Totally doesn't matter. If you do wanna go with something a little bit more natural, this is where you wanna look back at your color wheel. So obviously I've only got black, white, red, blue, yellow, but that doesn't mean we don't have brown. What we're gonna actually do is think of our complementaries. So if I want to create a kind of warm brown for something like a deer, something a little more natural, I'm gonna hit my red and then work from there to create my brown with its complement. Right, so once we have a brown that we're pretty happy with, it's just a matter of going back in here and reinforcing all those lines that we made earlier. This is where we can think about our brushes and their different uses. My smaller brush is gonna be really good for getting fine lines. Do not be afraid to look back at your source material, particularly if you have a really nice realistic image of the creature you're trying to cre recreate. Just like you probably learned when it came to coloring with colored pencils, 
coloring in the same direction is vital. If I am painting back and forth like this, you're gonna see that in my brush strokes and it's gonna kind of ruin that illusion. So if I keep my brush strokes moving in the same direction as my deer's actual body, I'm going to help create more of a fur-like pattern. So around the cheek here, I'm switching that up and I'm moving it with the contour of the cheek. Obviously animals are not all one color. There's going to be a little bit of variation. So if you're not, colors aren't completely mixed, that can also be a benefit to you. It gives you, you don't want just like bright pops of, you know, like that blue or green in there, but obviously a little bit of black, a little bit of white, a little more red even is not gonna be a bad thing. It's gonna help give your animal a little more of a, a ready natural look. do want to think about your light source when you're working on something like this that isn't in a particular setting you can be a little more creative with that light source you don't have to stick to necessarily you know where the light is in your image because I don't have a background here with a set Sun or direct lighting so I can kind of just make it up I'm gonna kind of have that light coming this direction here so I've got heavier shadows back here heavier shadows underneath that cheek area that's just kind of showing where it is in my my world and my brain at the moment. Another great thing about acrylic paint is how quickly it dries. So you can see here on my eye, I overpainted a little bit and that is absolutely no problem. I'm gonna let this dry, this area, and I can just repaint back over that with white afterwards. Um, if you have a super dark color underneath, sometimes the white um, may need two coats, but generally acrylic is thick enough that you can just do one more coat over top and you won't ever have known anything was underneath. Black here can be a really good tool to create a lot more shadows, but also texture and depth um, and the shape of your object. So like for my horns here, I'm following the same kind of rule as I was when it came to painting the fur, but using these kind of contour lines to show that the horns are wrapping around, that they have volume, they're not just flat little sticks coming out of my deer's head. And again, this is totally up to you stylistically if you like a really smooth blended effect you can absolutely still create that with this um, maybe even grabbing yourself a smaller brush giving it a rinse going in here just kind of gently contouring those lines of a structured eyebrow. Again, look back at your source material. That is going to be the biggest benefit. Get some really bright highlights in there. Just like with drawing, contrast is huge. It's what's going to really make your image pop off the page. So it doesn't have to be super hyper real in that aspect. Reality is often far less more interesting and dramatic than art is. from here is just kind of up to you. Do you like it simple like this? Do you want some pattern in your background? 
what else can we add in here that might be interesting? So we've got some cool pattern kind of happening in these horns. Maybe we could bring that down, start to add some swirls. Vary up that size and that line weight, thin, thick lines. Let's move some dots. Don't be afraid to have things go off the page. That's gonna actually create a whole new level of interest. If everything is right on the page, you've seen everything. You know exactly what the image is, it stops right there. But if you allow it to flow off the page, it gives the illusion of something else being that there's something new to look at, maybe some new interest. So that actually is a really huge benefit to your art if you just kind of allow it to wander off the page rather than giving it a really hard defined edge. So I'm gonna have this pattern kind of reach up here a little more. Don't be afraid to use the other side of your brush. So you can keep adding from there, or if you like it how it is, go ahead and let that dry.